Citizen Live. <risa> que en este caso lo vamos a hacer en tertillo. Saludos Aries, saludos Rock Darken, saludos Randur. Saludos Echo, saludos Pelao, saludos Orzo Wey, saludos Roibos. Y a ver un segundito rápido. Pim pan. Yeah. Bueno, pues a ver qué se cuentan. ¿Está todo el audio bien? ¿Escucháis todo bien? ¿Todo perfecto? Decirme que sí, porque esto va a ser en directo, o sea... Perfecto. Star Citizen Live will begin shortly. Oh, Dios mío. Ahora que digan, bueno, tenemos que cancelar el Star Citizen Live porque va a salir la 3.10 y no nos da tiempo a hacer las dos cosas. Maravilloso. ¿Dónde hay que firmar? <ríe> Se sería un espectáculo. Vamos a ver. Y las estrellas de fondo se mueven. Oh, Dios mío. Si dicen que van a hacer otro programa una semana, es que no sale hoy. ¿Cómo otro programa en una semana? No entiendo. El siguiente... No, no tiene que ver. O sea, te lo dices por el inside. El inside se para de hacer precisamente porque supuestamente eh, tienen que o sea, tienen que hacer reuniones y demás y, y evaluar el trabajo que han hecho y, y de cara al futuro. Es como cada final de parche es, el, es lo, que, lo que hacen, ¿no? Paralizan la temporada de lo, del noticiero y, y dejan tiempo para... Pues bueno, para el tema de empresa y todo eso. Y el próximo Insight vendrá el 23. Así que para el 23 ya tendrán todo zanjado, supuestamente. Han dejado bastante tiempo. Pero para el 23 ya supuestamente deberíamos estar a la 3.10 casi seguro. Al menos en PTU. Y bueno, pues hay posibilidades de que salga hoy. Hoy hay posibilidades, claro que sí. Y si no sería para la semana, para el 17. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Star, uh, Star Citizen Live. I almost forgot the name of the show that time. Uh, uh, the Ships of Gavin Rothery. Dice que casi olvida el nombre por un momento, que bienvenidos todos a Star Citizen Live y demás. We like to change up the format and do something unique. And today we are doing something that we haven't, we've only done twice before. Uh, we are going to introduce the community to one of our most prolific concept artists for Star Citizen. Uh, and basically... Eh, van a hacer algo que nunca han hecho antes, van a utilizar, van a introducir un, un concepto, algo que nunca habían hecho antes. O sea, que van a hacer un, un nuevo concepto. Es twice before, most recently with uh, uh, our favorite uh, Sarah McCullough, as she took us through all the ships that she's designed for Star Citizen. And then back in 2018, we did it uh, uh, with, with uh, the legendary uh, Jim Martin uh, from, Star, uh, from Star Trek and Starship Troopers, uh, who, who has contributed nine ships uh, to the Star Citizen pantheon of spaceships. But, but today, we've got some... Bueno, está comentando que... Teen ships for Star Citizens. Let's go ahead and meet our, our, our panel here. Uh, Gav. Bueno, pues que Gav ha estado haciendo como 14 naves para Star Citizen. O sea, que el tipo realmente es bastante, o sea, tiene un historial, un currículum bastante, bastante fuerte. For Star Citizen, uh, uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, let, let's, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and, 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 and what you do for Star Citizen. Well, my name is Gavin Rothery, and I'm originally a concept artist. 
I have done some work in the film industry too. You might know me from designing the film Moon in 2009. And... Bueno, que también es conocido por la industria del cine, que puede, puede que lo conozcáis por la peli de Full Moon en, en 2009. And Paul Jones, uh, you probably need no introduction, but we're going to do it anyway because every show is somebody's first show. Who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? Hi, my name is Paul Jones. Um, I am an art director here at CIG. No, Paul uh, Jones, que es el uh, eh, director de arte aquí en Cloud Imperium Games y todo eso. Have, and basically take care of spaceship concepts. Bueno, ya sabéis quién es, ¿no? que lo he dicho varias veces, que se encarga de todo el todo el proceso de lo que es los conceptos de artísticos y demás. Basically the, 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 the look of everything spaceship related starts with starts with you. Eh, con, con naves, o sea, conceptos de naves y tal. Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay. So, no uh, pressure. <laughs> so Gav, since this is the first time the Star Citizen community is meeting you, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. How did you how did you get started as a as a con bueno, que, no, que nos hable un poco más de él como en That was my degree, graphic design specializing in illustration. And what happened was I originally wanted to be a comic artist and I grew up reading 2000 AD, Dread, Road Trooper, all that stuff. And I graduated in 1996. And around that period, the comic industry was really starting to kind of um, scale itself back because Sony launched PlayStation and games were like cool again. And you had things like Wipeout and stuff and you know, games just got really cool. Mm -hmm. And next gen, everything moves to 3D. Um, you know, your Super Nintendo is starting to look a bit dusty. And yeah, the game industry was a very natural place for me to... Al, que al principio el tipo quería desarrollarse en el mundo del cómic y tal, porque le estaba preguntando y escolando que cómo empezó en todo esto. Y en, en definitiva que acabó, pues acabó decidiéndose por el mundo del videojuego, porque bueno, él, él sacó su, su grado en, en 1996. Y bueno, que a partir de ahí pues que las consolas que estaban pegando fuerte, Playstation y demás, y Super Nintendo incluso antes... Y que, y que bueno, que, que le pareció que el mundo del videojuego estaba más en crecimiento que el, que el coming y por eso se decidió por eso. It kind of inevitably kind of pointed me in that direction because it's like all my kind of favorite things combining. So I feel very fortunate. I think I've got very lucky along the way, but yeah, this dream job basically. Uh, and maybe this is a question for, for you and Paul here. How did you get your start with Star Citizen? How did that come about? fiction. And I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. And honestly, um, Star Citizen just kind of appeared like Destiny Manifest. It was... Vale, dice que, que bueno, que al principio le está preguntando, y, y bueno, ¿cómo fue? O sea, ¿por qué os decidisteis por trabajar en Star Citizen y todo eso de alguna manera, no? Entonces dice que, que está, está bromeando, ¿no? Bueno, bromeando no, o sea, está diciendo que, que estaba a punto de tener un, un crío eh, con su mujer y que, y que era el momento de asentar la vida y y poner todo todo en orden y que Star City se le pareció una experiencia apetecible y que bueno pues ahí se embarcó y que están bastante contentos se consideran con bastante suerte de estar trabajando en un proyecto como Star City ¿no? so, like están hablándonos de la Gladius ahora de cómo empezó a hacer la Gladius de no decir que esto es pre-metric, pero no sé qué, o sea que lleva siete, siete años de antigüedad este, este concepto. Claro, dice que, dice que fue un reto, o sea, fue, fue un, más que un reto, como un, como un juicio para, para Paul, dice, en el sentido de, de que no había trabajado en naves hasta, hasta ahora y que, o sea, hasta el trabajar en Star Citizen y que era pues es un reto, ¿no? Que sabía algo de, había visto algo de ciencia ficción y tal, pero que era un mundo nuevo para, para él. As we're working together, and it, it, you can see even right back at the beginning, it is the Gladius, mm -hmm. you know, it, it had a certain manifest kind of destiny right from the beginning. 
but you can see the you know you can see the shape coming together quite quickly i think one of the things i always loved about working uh, with you paul particularly is that whenever we get our teeth into something we we get a lot of progress quite quickly it feels like like we we move when we work and i always really appreciate that uh, dice que una de las cosas que aprecia eh, con respecto, poniendo como ejemplo a la, a la Gladius, es que al principio pues el concepto pues estaba pues eso, muy, muy pobre, muy primitivo y tal, pero que empezó a avanzar y que ya tenía como su, su camino marcado y que, y que enseguida evolucionó en lo que hoy conocemos como la Gladius y que es algo que aprecia del estudio en general, esa, esa forma de trabajar, de que enseguida cuando empiezan a trabajar en algo lo, lo sacan adelante con, con relativa agilidad. ¿no? So when we were doing this, we weren't doing promo pieces. It was just to get a look at the ship. So my deliverable, I mean, it still is, but back then my deliverable was these two images, this one and this one, to get a look at the ship. These look so bad and old now. Um, <laughs> I got to apologize. I feel like I've grown a lot over the last six years. Um, It's just the wear, isn't it? We don't do wear like that anymore. No. I deliver this and also the 3D concept mesh for the build team. So they had a, because all this comes from a 3D model. Um, but this is back before we did promo pieces, right? So this is just images to see the Yeah, ship. no, I mean, I took this piece and um, I'm because there was a point that we did need to do some promo for it. And but I think we did, I did like two, two images. It was almost like a sort of old, um, like, like war piece, you know, you know, like a collectible you'd find on a desk mm -hmm. and uh, it'd be worn. It's got a coffee stain on it and stuff like that. Um, I think that was probably the probably the start of the promo. I yeah. actually have that. I've just found that. Está diciendo de que esas dos imágenes fueron las que seleccionaron, que se ve un poco antigua y tal, que ahora que, que, que considera que su trabajo ha evolucionado más. Y que fueron las imágenes que, que utilizaron para su promo, que parecía como algo que pudieras tener en tu escritorio, ¿no? Como un juguete o demás. Pero que esas fueron las dos imágenes que, que pidió Paul y que las que escogieron, ¿no? Para, para hacer la promoción de Gladius. Shows that off. So, you know, I'd love to be able to go, yeah, look, I've got all my Gladius work. It's so awesome. Mm. And I've just got a couple of really old scrappy little images to show. And the end ship's like beautiful. And the build team finished with it. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, from the from the Gladius, you moved on to uh, another big fan. Me están hablando de que de que cuando tuvieron eso, cuando tuvieron las imágenes que estaba el tipo un, como flipado, ¿no? Como muy que, que lucía impresionante la, la la Gladius cuando acabaron, ¿no? Manufacturer in Anvil. So, what are your recollections about the development, the early development of the F8 at this point? That was. I'll just show you a couple. Of, I'm just going to keep showing images as I'm Absolutely. talking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, again. Of same, same kind of... Vale, está preguntando de que, cuáles son vos, su recolección de, la, de las primeras iteraciones que tuvo con la, con la F8 y que nos va a enseñar otras imágenes que estamos viendo aquí. Um, there's a lot of techniques that I use now in my work that I developed through working with Paul and working on Star Citizen. So if I was going to do these images again now, they'd look completely different, obviously, and like, you know, 100 times better. Um, but it was the same deliverable at the time. It was two images of the ship and a 3D mesh. Yeah, but... like, I mean, I guess we had the... What ships did we have in Anvil at that point? I guess it was the Gladiator. The Gladiator, it? the Hornet. The at the time that yeah. this was developed, not necessarily, the, and that's the big difference. There's the time this was developed, and then there was the time this was revealed to people. Para que está está comentando, aclarando además que que hoy en día con las técnicas que ha aprendido, que que probablemente hubiera sacado unas mejores imágenes, que estaba hecho con una con una red 3D. Y que, y que además que por aquella época, cuando se desarrolló la, eh, el Anvil, pues realmente solo estaba, creo que dice Discordando que solo estaba la Gladiator por aquel entonces y la, y la Hornet, que, que, o sea, que, que es un, un diseño bastante antiguo, ¿no? El de la F8, por lo, por lo que comenta, o sea, que empezaron a desarrollarla muy pronto. Additional information to take on and, and kind of get through. It's one of the things about this stuff that, that I enjoy so much. Like, I got to do a Crusader ship towards the end of last year, <clears throat> excuse me, and it was just, you know, I'd seen the brand and I've been busting to do a Crusader ship. So, when I got the chance, you know, it, those, those kind of things just brighten your day up, you know. Well, 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 we'll get to your crusader ship in a bit, but after the, you started with the Gladius, and then you went to the F8, and that, so, so you went Aegis to Anvil, and then your next one uh, is was probably, for a lot of people, the most iconic of Aegis ships. Like, this has been a, uh, th this this has been an incredibly popular ship since the moment it was introduced at CitizenCon 2015, uh, and that's the Sabre. Yeah, 
Right. Está comentando de que, de que una de las cosas que también les, le pareció interesante de trabajar o le, por el enfoque distinto de haber trabajado en, en Crusader, pero le está, lo está cortando y escorando diciendo que bueno, antes de pasar ahí vamos a hablar, sigue la onda de X y tal, porque una de, la, de las naves que, que probablemente es icónica en el juego fue, fue la Saber, ¿no? que también es de, de este señor. La verdad es que tiene, tiene montones de montones de cosas. Eh, o sea, tiene claro, 40 naves, o sea, 40 naves, no, 14 naves en Star Citizen y además que 14 naves, ¿no? And this is where we ended up with it. And I really enjoyed doing this because it was like I was making a, a proper little scene and just kind of playing with lights and stuff. And it was just a really good um, exercise for me to be able to like level up. It was really fun to do this. Is... Claro, está diciendo que la, la Saber para él que fue un, un buen ejercicio para subir de nivel en su, en su profesión, que aprendió muchísimas cosas haciéndolo, ¿no? Yeah, it came together really nice. It, it, it was a, I don't know, it was, it was one of those really, um, I mean, to be honest, all these ships have been really fun to do. It's, I haven't done anything. I haven't done any work for Star Citizen that's really gotten into the, the kind of grind that you think of when you sort of think negatively of the game industry, because game industry can put you through grind. And I understand being on the concept side of things, I'm on the kind of lighter side of that anyway, as far as the general spectrum of development goes. But just being able to, um, You know, get and work on this stuff in the mornings. Just, it's always been awesome, even after like over six years. Claro, bueno, está, está comparando eh, Star Citizen con, con lo que significa trabajar en otros videojuegos, en otros proyectos. Y dice que una de las cosas que, que agradece de, de Star Citizen, o que está, pues, que cada vez que se levantaba por la mañana, ¿no? Para trabajar en los conceptos y demás, que siempre lo, lo hacía con, con ilusión y con, y con emoción, ¿no? Que es, que es algo que que es algo que le parece increíble, ¿no? El, el, el tema de cómo es hacer conceptos para Star Citizen. That's just not the way I like to go. And like I was saying, Star Citizen is is so complex and it is evolving. And it's kind of like it is like it's almost like you know the, the car industry. You know, as the project's going, even our own brands are developing. And we're sort of we're you know the early stuff we're just you know is dropping off the back and we're like no we don't want to. Star Citizen es eh, complejo, está en constante evolución. Eh, se parece bastante a cómo funciona una compañía de manufactura de, de coches. ¿no? Que a medida que van avanzando, pues van evolucionando las cosas también. No, es un punto que hago muy frecuente cuando quien ve un nuevo coche de un marca particular, como, oh, eso no parece como like Aegis, o eso no parece como Drake, o whatever. I'm like, I'm like, look at Ford over just a 50-year span. Y you luego, know, and, and look at the, just the Mustang. Look at Claro, está mirando, está diciendo, disparando que hay mucha gente que dice que, que dice que protesta porque esta nave no se parece a una Drake o no se parece a una Anvil, pero fijaros por ejemplo en Ford, ¿no? El, el Ford Mustang de antes y el Ford Mustang de ahora. Así que tiene sentido que tiene sentido que las marcas vayan cambiando y vayan evolucionando a lo largo del tiempo, ¿no? Aerodynamic. Your your next ship uh, eschewed all of that, and I'm not I'm not embarrassed to say that when when I first saw this concept, I did you know not enjoy it. I did not enjoy it. Like 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 when I first saw this, like I had a visceral reaction. I was like, oh oh, I do not like this. And then it just don't tell me that. No 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 no. But no but then. Está diciendo nuestro siguiente concepto, el siguiente concepto que vamos a ver. Eh, en principio no me gustó. Dice escolando, pero con el con el tiempo. Sí que puede ver de, que, de lo que realmente iba de esto, ¿no? Pero al principio como que no le gustó nada el, el concepto de la que van a hablar. Oh, right, the Terrapin. Right. Y es la Terrapin. So, what, did yeah. think, what did you think he was going to say, Gav? <laughs> I got the Prospector open on my screen, because that was actually the order we did them in, but I, oh. must have, I probably gave you the wrong order, Jared. Ah, uh, it's all right. We'll, we'll talk about the Terrapin, then we'll backtrack to the Prospector then. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was my mistake. Yeah, um, Pensó... okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Pensó que se refería a la Prospector, que además la tiene abierta la pantalla, pero... Pero no, que la prospecta lo vemos de después, ¿no? Dice. Pero que, que sí, que era la Terra, pero la que, le, la que al principio no le gustó nada a, a Disco Lando. Again, it's making scenes, you know, it's, it's promo pieces with actual moments of narrative in there. Like, you know, here we've got like um, a crew about to board. And it's just, it's just nice putting those little things in. This was a fun ship too, to put the, the side ramp in. I remember, Paul, we had a bit of a, a big chat about the boarding for this, right? Because the side ramp was new at this point. Mm -hmm. 
Claro, está, está diciendo de que había bastante... Bueno, dice porque hay bastantes cosas nuevas alrededor de esta nave y que una de las cosas nuevas, una de las novedades era lo de la rampa, que discutieron bastante sobre el concepto y sobre todo también cómo se ve ahí en, en lo que es el, la imagen que supuestamente es para cartel publicitario, cómo evolucionaba, ¿no? Porque ya tenía pues una escena montada de personas a punto de abordar la nave, ¿no? De subir a la nave. <risa> hey, ¿Qué pasa, Iván? We were originally thinking about something akin to a, an Eagle transporter from Space 1999, if I recall. Yes, that's yeah. right, yes. But I did love, this This is one of my big passions is doing cutaways. I love a cutaway. So I was always really happy with the way this piece came out because it was the first time I'd done like a really, a cutaway that I was like really, really happy with. And um, this will look back from my art perspective. This will look back to what we do next with a perspective. But um, yeah, I really enjoy, I really enjoy a nice cutaway. I thought the Terrapin came out really nice, but Jared, what you just said then about um, having to come around on it, I get what you were saying then. I thought you were talking about the Prospect originally. I was like, well, I thought it was quite a pretty ship. It's like a little silver, yeah. you know. Uh no, no, it just, I, 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 no, it, it's like I, I, I couldn't begin to explain it. I, I couldn't explain it. It's just you know, any, anything like the worst thing that can happen with a piece of art is everybody just kind of goes, eh. It's all right. I mean, I mean, I mean, the best art creates a, vis a, a visceral reaction in folks, and and I always appreciated it for that because when I first saw it, I was just like, I'm like, what the hell is this? I was like, this, it, was, it, it, made, it had such a, it made. Está diciendo, está diciendo descolando que es importante que cuando hay una pieza de arte, lo peor que te puede pasar es que la gente pues eh, tenga indiferencia, ¿no? Pero que si genera una reacción eh, visceral. Pues que lo que le pasó, que eso está bien, ¿no? Y pues lo que le pasó a Discolando es que cuando ve la Terrapin por primera vez dice, pero ¿qué cojones es esto, no? Es básicamente eso es lo que, lo que pensó al principio, aunque luego dice que ya, que luego sí entendió el porqué y le empezó a gustar más. ¿no? building here and they're going, I'm like, I started to really appreciate, I'm like, oh, there is so much, there is so much going on here that I didn't appreciate for. So it was, it was, it was. Claro, está diciendo, discordando ahora mismo que empezó a mirar por todos los lados de la nave y que de repente se fijó en que eh, hay muchas cosas que, que realmente no había apreciado de, con detalle, ¿no? Que ahora entiendo la nave de otra manera. For me, to see, to see all the magic that was involved. So let's go back now since since I skipped it here and let's talk about the prospector. Now, Vamos the prospector, a la prospector ahora. Um, vale. Built uh, builds on a lot of what uh, we've already we, we've seen from Misk in the past with the freelancer and takes it in some exciting new directions. Yeah, I mean, I was really happy with the way this piece came out. I was being a bit bold with the orange, but I thought that, um, it came together quite nicely. Um, this ship, again, I think. What would you give? Remember the start though. Oh, it was difficult. It, I'd give it like an eight initially. Because um, remember that, yeah, because we followed, yeah, we had quite a, it was, it seemed like quite a strict design brief initially. Mm -hmm. And because it was a new, you know, with all these new ships and new, you know, new functions and behaviors and stuff, um, we were following it quite, quite closely. And when Chris first saw it, he was, uh, I guess you could say, was not happy with <laughs> what I was showing him. Was <laughs> that, I was like, that would have been this. Están comentando que una de las cosas que, que tenía la nave así rara al principio, que era la escalera, que son funciones nuevas que se añaden a las naves. Pero se lo enseñaron a Chris Roberts al principio y al principio no, no, le, no le había gustado nada el, el concepto a Chris de, de la nave. ¿no? Bueno, la verdad es que como evolucionó, que dice que está bastante contento el, el, el tipo que la hizo, ¿no? que está bastante contento con, con el resultado de la nave final. El proyecto, y desde luego ha cambiado mucho de cómo era el concepto así naranja. Y con, con todas esas movidas de, de mucho más simple, algo mucho más evolucionado, ¿no? Como lo conocemos hoy en día la Prospector. Things and just gone right that one, and just kind of dragged it forwards. That's never happened. But we do yeah. experiment quite a bit, don't we, Paul? At the beginning of a ship, like yeah. especially now that we've got our groove on now, we'll do quite a lot of versions of things. Sí, que hicieron yeah, mucha experimentación yeah, con la nave, muchas and, versiones you know, diferentes. It's part of the process now, um, and you know, Chris, that's like the expectation from Chris is that he wants to see those variants and he wants. And... Claro, dice que es, de hecho la, el que está de variaciones es un estándar ahora en el proceso de creación de naves y que precisamente pues quería, eh, quería o sea, Chris quiere que, que haya diferentes versiones de las naves, ¿no? Para dar su aprobación. And he'll sort of pick bit of A, bit of C, bit of D, um, and and then we sort of move forward. But yeah, when it's when it's the when it's the new function stuff, it's kind of I don't know. I find that the scariest time because I'm just like I don't know what. I don't... Dice que cuando cuando hay nuevas funciones en una nave que 
que, que va como un poco asustado, como con miedo, entre comillas, ¿no? De, de, por decirlo de alguna manera, dice Paul, porque no sabe lo que no sabe lo que Chris le va a responder, no sabe qué esperarse, ¿no? Most misships were designed by Jim Martin, who we who we uh, discussed earlier, and I see this as like, okay, miss going, okay, how do we update our 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 look, uh, you know, for for a new generation? You can see that in the cockpit, you know, with, especially with the visibility. It, it starts, you know, has the same wrap around from the Freelancer and other misships, but now uh, expanded and evolved. The the VTOLs expanded and evolved. Uh, I really see the evolution here. I appreciate that. Claro, dice que aquí podemos ver cómo es la, la evolución de la, de la casa eh, eh, MISC, ¿no? Eh, de, de, en el sentido de que pues la cabina pues tiene más visibilidad, de, los VTOL se ven como más, más modernos, eh, que, que aprecia, que dijo Nando aprecia al ver la evolución de la marca en ese sentido. This was the first one I ever did, and the reason why this stuff sort of um, reaches me so much is when I was a kid, uh, my dad used to work on. Oil no, no lo he dicho en ese sentido, darks, like darkens. Lo... So, lo de lo de miedo no lo he dicho en ese sentido. Lo he dicho por el hecho de, o sea, como una forma de hablar en el sentido de de que, en, pues, le sentaría mal, obviamente, que no le guste si hace algún trabajo, no, porque tendría que hacerlo de, de otra manera. O sea, al final tratas de tratas de con tu trabajo que complazca ¿no? a, la, a la persona para la que está para la que está hecho a las personas para la que están hechas entonces es normal que si haces algo nuevo pues que tengas ahí un poco de, de respeto no en el sentido de, de bueno pues he trabajado x horas aquí y espero que mi que mi trabajo de alguna manera pues sea recompensado con una aprobación ¿no? You know, orthographic cutaways with all these little rooms and ships, and where all the weapons are stored, and where the people sleep, and all that stuff, where the engines are, and it's it's just super cool to be able to get to do that at this level now on a project like Star Citizen. It's I'm gonna really I'm, cool. I'm gonna send you a picture afterwards. My uh, uh, the room over there is decorated in scans from the Terran Trade Authority's books, the great really? space, great great space battles and stuff like that, and then and then space blown tracks. up and then blown up uh, biggest posters. So I. I'm right with you with those books. Mm -hmm. um, next in your in your path through the ships of Star Citizen um, is your first alien ship. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So your first alien ship. Uh, th th this was one that we actually we actually had a really neat con el siguiente concepto que tienen es eh, en una en su primera nave alien. Uh, we, we we released the idea of it which was the Tavaran Prowler, and we asked our, our community to submit their ideas uh, for what they thought it would look like, and we presented them during the live stream, and it was a lot of fun. And then we revealed uh, the Tavaran Prowler, and uh, it blew a lot of folks away. So tell us, tell us about the development of this one, your, your first alien. Sí, bueno, que para, el te para la nave Tavarin... Is that I've only ever had one of in my life, this one. Well, so I was about to go to Australia. So I remember when I delivered this, I basically dropped the shit and like jumped in a taxi and like was off to Heathrow. <laughs> um, so I've always got really visceral memories of, of finishing this ship. Plus, when we when we did this ship, actually, let me just do a screen share. When sure. we finished this ship, I um, <clears throat> I recall this was there was some. I'm not quite sure what was happening, but I remember I took a break after this. We we kind of we had like a little break from each other, Paul. Do you remember? No. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Eh, bueno, está diciendo de que de que cuando hicieron esta nave, pues que eh, como que el Star City se envió a la comunidad que desarrollara conceptos y que los enviara y tal. Y cuando finalmente salió la nave y la, de, la desarrollaron, que, que voló la cabeza de, de mucha gente, ¿no? En el sentido de que impresionó a mucha gente. Y que, bueno, estaba comentando simplemente de que cuando salió la nave, que se acuerda perfectamente de los últimos toques finales y de cuando la entregó, porque justo antes eh, hizo un viaje a Australia, porque son la mujer de él es de Australia, y que era un, un, un viaje, pues el único viaje importante, grande que hizo en su vida, por decirlo de alguna manera, parece que lo, lo decía en plan en ese tono. Y, y que después de después de eso, pues que como que se tomaron un descanso, que recuerdo que se habían tomado un descanso, que le preguntó a Paul si lo, se lo habían tomado y que Paul que no se acuerda de nada, absolutamente, de si lo habían tomado o no. Brand new art style, brand new interior. Um, this but yeah, this is... Without the cockpit as well, right? Because it's got a metal cockpit. And that was yeah, the one-way glass, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, this is one of, I think this is one of... This is one of this has got to be one of the top sort of images, like sort of standout images, for me. Uh, this is like the only image of the prowl that I did. 
I remember I, I put the mesh together, got all the mesh work done, fired that over, and I did one of the interior that wasn't even, it wasn't quite finished, I think. I remember I, I passed it over, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right, yes. That. Yeah. yeah, so we brought it in-house and we've, and um, continued with the program. No, está, está comentando de que de hecho solo habían hecho la imagen que nos habían enseñado para concepto y que dice Paul que son de las imágenes que, que más está que más le gusta ¿no? de, de, de conceptos y demás que han hecho. Multiple resources. So after the prowler, uh, after stretching out furthest from where you started with, with 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 the first ship of an entirely new alien race, you then came back to uh, a manufacturer that that you started with, Aegis, uh, working on the Eclipse. Yeah. Um, Después la Plaro se fue a trabajar en la Eclipse, o sea, este tipo de trabajo en Guatemalaadas. Remember the reveal, Paul. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I asked uh, Cody, uh, not Cody, Corey, um, to to do some fabric work for me. There's a cloth stem. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was cool. But uh, yeah, yeah that's, another, was... that's another cool shot, the previous one. Again, the, put, I love putting together little hangar scenes and stuff. It's really fun. It kind of tickles my little sci-fi architecture itches where you can just sort of block out all these like sort of crazy shapes and just kind of play a little bit and play with the light a little bit. Que dice que el hecho, el hecho de, de ser naves en ciencia ficción que puedes eh, ponerte un poco más loco a la hora de, de diseñar y hacer todos, todas estas naves loquísimas, ¿no? Como por ejemplo, pues, pues la Blorer o esta o la, o la Eclipse, ¿no? Que es bastante divertido el hacerlo. Pero que es no tan mucho de Gladius en ahí. Creo que fue más Saber. Creo que fue sort of heading en ese territorio. But then you know it's it's stealth bomber, so um, that was heavily heavily influencing it. Yeah. Uh, as an art director, Paul, does a stealth ship have to be black? Yeah. Están haciendo la pregunta ahí tonta. No, si una nave de steel, porque esta es una nave de steel bombardera, está diciendo tiene que ser una nave de sigilo bombardera, o sea, negra y. Y dice, sí, tiene que ser de color negro, ¿no? En nuestro universo, en nuestro real universo. Yeah. Probably Gav knows this, but... Yeah, ¿Cómo, lo se lo preguntó como eh, eh, art, eh, artista color. de concepto, ¿no? Uh, <laughs> como director de arte. Right, so de from, from, from that, if I'm not mistaken, you went to your first ground vehicle. Sí, no, 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 Uh, today is not recognizing our, our paid status for whatever reason, so we are going to have to start and stop the call again in about 10 minutes. But don't worry. Bueno, que en, en 10 minutos van a tener que parar la llamada y volver a arrancarla porque no reconoce el pago que han hecho para poder hablar. <laughs> Madre mía. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know if you know about Paul, but you know his his whole um, sort of background has got a lot to do with vehicles, right? Paul bikes and stuff. Yeah, all my references. <laughs> Poor Gav is just like, there's this, there's this bit off this motorcycle, and then there's this rear swing arm, and then there's this bit here, and uh, there's this bit of Ducati or MV or whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, what... this was uh, it was fun. This getting into some ground vehicles, right? And just um, pulling all those references apart, and just um, having a bit of time to refine the shapes of it. Yeah, and just had you know, like how did. Bueno, dice que eso en plan, a la hora de referencias, utilizaron referencias de varios vehículos, como de eh, incluso de, de motos, ¿no? Tipo Ducati y demás, estaba comentando eh, que toda la, todas las referencias que tiene, como que tiene Paul son de motos, estaba bromeando con eso, y que pues uniendo varios conceptos de varias partes, o varias referencias de varias partes, pues al final junta, el proceso de juntar todas las piezas y acabar creando pues el cyclo. ¿De dónde vienen ¿De dónde vienen las ruedas? From the madness of Gav's mind. Yeah, I, it was one of those things where I remember when we were designing the 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 vehicle in, in its entirety, Paul. Right, we started with the chassis, didn't we? We were trying to take the proper automotive approach to the sort of design engineering approach, and we spent quite a bit of time on the chassis and then kind of the wheels. Kind of, we we just had like blocked out cylinders for wheels for quite a long time, 
and I always just wanted to put some, I don't know, I just wanted to do some signature stuff that just stood out of it and looked cool. Yeah, I mean, you did quite a few as far as I can remember on that. I think you did like four different types, um, but that they definitely were the coolest. Está hablando de la procedencia de las ruedas, pero es de... Está hablando de la, el Madness of uh, Gundam o algo así. Puede ser, de Gundam. No sé si ha dicho Gundam, ¿eh? No lo no tengo claro. Pero creo que, creo que sí, vale. Tiene que hacer el corte y volver a entrar. Creo que ha dicho Gundam. No estoy seguro. Shagundam, básicamente, ¿no? La serie de anime. Curioso. Bueno, y aquí estamos esperando a que vuelvan a arrancar <ríe> Zoom TM. Las ruedas, como piña una larga punta aguda, 10 ruedas. Eh, bueno, ahora es bastante más duro el, el Cyclone de lo que era antes, y la verdad es que aguanta bastante más. Lo, el problema que tiene ahora mismo el Cyclone es en las lunas y eso, que es un desastre. Bueno, todos los vehículos así, en plan, en las lunas o en Aberdeen y todo eso, es una locura. And we're back. Okay. So, don't know why. Zoom today is like, eh, you, you, you don't really pay, but we're paid. All right. So, we've got the Cyclone here. Uh, small ground vehicle. Now you're going to go to, you've, got, you've, you've now done your smallest vehicle and you're about to jump to your largest vehicle uh, with, a, with another return to Aegis and the Hammerhead. So when, when, when you first heard about the Hammerhead, were you intimidated by the size and scope of this or did you just like, give it to me, let's go? Bueno, no, at this point, I think... La primera vez que escuchaste sobre la Hammerhead, ¿te intimidó el tamaño o tal? ¿O cómo fue el, el enfrentarte al concepto de la Hammerhead? Because yes, they tend to have quite different interiors. Like there's a lot more going on in, in, in the interiors. And one of the things that um, I always appreciated about being able to create these ships for Star Cities and it's the level of detail we get to go into. So with something like Hammerhead, the interior was like a whole, um, a whole runaround. You know, it's almost like a level of a, like a traditional like um, first person shooter kind of thing. Claro, está comentando de que eh, una de las cosas que más le gusta de las naves grandes es eh, lo, que lo que sucede adentro, ¿no? porque hay una cantidad de detalles adentro de cosas que es casi como un nivel de un juego, de, de un shooter, ¿no? como casi un nivel de un videojuego. Yeah, because uh, basically we'd had a lot of sort of feedback about interiors and sort of just, um, you know, the team wanted something that was where they would have to sort of make less changes when it went into production. Um, and by this time we'd got a kit, a good kit of parts, especially for the interior. And um, so we were sort of more, I guess this was at least in my mind it was the start of us becoming a lot more methodical i don't know if you i don't know if you agree with that gav maybe you were well, we had to, anyway. we? no we did i remember we had to. Bueno, están, están comentando de que por esta época recuerda que bueno que estos fueron los conceptos de, de, de la nave y que también recibieron mucho feedback de a, a nivel interno sobre el interior de, de sobre los interiores de las naves y también el hecho de que a partir de, de desarrollar esta nave, que se volvieron como más... O sea, durante el proceso de desarrollo de esta de nave, empezaron a, hacer, a ser más metódicos por necesidad, ¿no? Necesitamos ser más metódicos. El knock-on también, ¿no? Sabes, you know, you move, like, there needs to be addition or subtraction or this room is not big enough. And yeah. then it's just, okay, well, now I need to edit 15 other spaces. Yeah, uh, particularly towards the end of the, of the concept, definitely. Uh, the overwhelmingly predominant question from the chat regarding the hammerhead is, what's up with the hole in the center? Where did that come from? ¿Dónde viene el, el hueco del medio de la hammerhead? ¿Dónde that viene? ¿Dónde sale eso? That was, that was the rule of cool. There wasn't even, there wasn't even the, do you know what it is? I really, it's really funny actually. It's basically, you know, a claw hammer? You mm -hmm. look at that in silhouette and it's basically just two claw hammers joined together. So it creates a double hammerhead and then you've got two shafts mm. and it was as simple as that and it, i guess as you know like we were talking about before there's always that drive to create something interesting and 
like I don't like I don't like doing stuff that's already been done. I remember yeah. the early thing with this Paul, I thought I'd nailed it straight away. I was like, yeah, no, lo que basic... está diciendo es que el, el agujero siempre viene de que son dos, dos martillos y ya está. O sea, que son dos martillos con el hueco en el medio, que eso es todo. Es de eso viene el hueco, simplemente. <laughs> I'm talking like, you know what I'm looking at. I'm just like looking <laughs> at right. a thing on my computer. Okay, so this is the, um, the sort of first version I did, which was like the kind of... Y es la primera um, versión de la Hammerhead, que locura. Runner, you seen this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, And so straight away off the bat, I was like, I've got this. This is going to be the, the quickest one ever. Like, I know exactly I know exactly what you're after. And I put this together. And then I remember we chatted about it, Paul, didn't we? And Paul just went, far too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm yeah. not even sure I showed Chris. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Dice que, o sea, él pensando que yo tengo esto tal, y cuando se lo enseñó a Paul que dijeron, esto es demasiado obvio. <laughs> Es demasiado obvio que es un jodido tiburón martillo, ¿no? Absolutely um, nothing from Gavin. Just, just... just whenever Gavin's heard that. So this was a, a sort of a somewhat of a compromising version. You can see the DNA warping from one to another over these images. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. And then basically Chris was like, um, he basically wanted all the guns to be able to fire on one point. So that was that was then that that shape change that happened. I did an image. I often do like a little sketchbook whilst I'm working, and I did this working this little sketchbook image. And I just thought it was lovely and moody. It's yeah, when I'm nice. when I'm sort of finished working on a model, I'll just move it around and take renders. And there's something about that piece that just really, really sort of does it for me. Yeah. So yep. yeah, I think it's because you got the depth of field on and everything. It just feels like something you could just pick up off your desk. Yeah, it's got that kind of flint, that flinty black and white always does something for me as well. Bueno, básicamente que al final con los dos conceptos que vimos ahí vimos cómo se acabaron uniendo y acabaron eh, dando pues el lugar al, al diseño de final de la nave y todo esto pues eh, con comentarios con Chris y demás, ¿no? Con Chris Roberts. Nord from Don Steeler in the chat, so if you want to hate somebody, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, we've got Aegis ships, we've got Anvil ships, uh, you, you, you've, you've done you've done Tavarin ships, you've done the Cyclone. Uh, at this point. You, 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 you come back you, you come back to uh, it's another citizen con reveal ship at this point and it's the uh, the Valkyrie if I remember you you, you worked on the Valkyrie uh, which That's we fine. just revealed uh, time blurs is it two years ago now um, I honestly couldn't tell you. It wasn't last year, was it? It was the year before that. I... Sí, bueno, otra, otra vez que, que las que trabajó no, fue no, la que salió la Cite 5. Con, con la Valkyrie. They all blend. But... It must have been three years ago. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll go on. <coughs> None of us are calendars. Let's talk about the Valkyrie. Uh, there's a... I, I, there, there's, there's a lot from the... Tavar, uh, from the, uh, from the... That'll be the drop ship. Kind of. Exactly. There's, there's a yeah. lot from the um, Terrapin here, I, I see. And the, and the Hornet. Uh, yeah. You see a lot of Hornet DNA in here. There was a kind of... I was kind of sneaking a little bit of Thunderbird 2 in there as well. Trying oh, to, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, just a little bit of it. I mean, this is a... I was really happy the way this ship came out, but it was one of those examples of um, <clears throat> a ship which is largely dictated by its own design in that it needed four big potted beetles. Mm -hmm. So straight away, you've got a big engine in each corner. So no matter what you're trying to do with the design, you you know, you've, you've got this consideration. And one of the things about Star Citizen that's always... Um, a big challenge is we always have engines and thrusters and sort of maneuvering mechanisms and flight surfaces that have to be in there. And so straight away from the beginning, we've got a whole bunch of um, design constraints to work. Claro, está comentando Escolando que una de las cosas que tuvo esta nave que bueno que fue bueno fue ins eh, inspirada por la Terrapin y que también tiene cosas sobre la sobre la Hornet y demás. Eh, es una nave de, de Anvil, acordaros. Y, y el hecho de, de que una de las cosas que comenta que tienes que tener en cuenta a la hora de diseñar naves en Star Citizen es que tienes que tener en cuenta que hay funcionalidades, que hay cosas que hay que meter sí o sí. Y en este caso, pues eran lo, los cuatro motores eh, VTOL, que eran algo, pues un, un requisito de la nave, ¿no? Y que, y que bueno, pues que, que había que meterlo. Entonces, que hay que adaptar el diseño también en a esas cosas en Star Citizen. Every ship is just going to be like a, a rectangle, basically, with a guy sitting up front. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, essentially, that's what this is. I mean, I guess it's kind of a rec I guess that's kind of what this is. But it's all about how to how to get that rectangle and hide the facts. It's basically. I think I, 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 think I think tried that once. That rectangle with. Claro, dice, dice que una de las cosas que hay que tener en cuenta es que si te paras a hacer una nave que todos salían rectángulos con motores puestos ahí al lado en Star Citizen, pero tienes que evitar que eso sea, ¿no? Que todavía sigue siendo eso. 
eh, un rectángulo con, con cuatro motores y tal, pero que, que hay que tratar de, de evitar que, que parezca eso, ¿no? Y que pues con, con eso, pues que el, como describiendo un poco del, del proceso de, de, Star, de, de lo que es hacer naves en Star Citizen, además de la Valkyria y además de el hecho de que, de que es un perfecto ejemplo de, de cómo se debe hacer una nave, ¿no? So it's all, there's a lot of a lot of times the subtlety is what matters in these things, because if you go from this to the end result, it's not like a quantum leap from one to the other, but you just got to be able to put that kind of um, you got to be able to just refine things. And again, going back to what Paul was saying about how it's quite similar to things that we see in the automotive industry, you know, the in, Vamos a hacer in the way that you know, se me cayó el suelo, lo you know, recoge, you know, se lo lleva, a ver. <laughs> Those are the kind of constraints that we find ourselves working in a lot of the time as well, right, Paul? Yeah, yeah. It's always a there's always a stage where um, we do some backwards and forwards of <clears throat> 3D and 2D, mm -hmm. and just you know massaging it basically. Because like Gav says, yeah, you can you can have a line that if it's if it's just not right, you you're just like oh that's that's not it. That's not mm -hmm. you know we just need to nudge it. So there comes a point in the project where it's just all about death by a thousand cuts. It's just tweak this, tweak that, move this, and it's all just. I actually think I this that's... is where we um, where we work really well together, Paul. Because you know, like a lot of artists have got like super, they'll have like an extra one, power, like one. plus one. Your one of your well, you've got a few, but one of your plus ones that's really apparent is seeing those lines. Además, los que fatal. Because I'll be like really focused in the avión. middle of it all, and I've just got like all these like jumbled shapes everywhere, and it's hard for me to step back and see those lines sometimes. And Paul will just come in and look at a render, and he'll sort of look at it and go, hmm, and he'll go. And straight away, the designs just cleaned up in a way that I'd need to probably step away for a couple of days from my computer and come back and look at it cold to be able to see that. And I think that's probably it's so it's one of the main reasons why I really appreciate um, working with you on that level, the speed that we can get things done, because our brains seem to mesh in such a way that you can bring that level of clarity and see it immediately. But bueno, I don't need to go away for two days and come back and look at it cold a to ver, be able to get eh, that. La cuestión, la cuestión... La cuestión es la siguiente, que en lo que es la parte de la Valkyrie nos estuvimos fijando el otro día que hay como dos raíles y esos otros raíles no sabemos si sirven para docking o no y, y a ver si nos responden de, el, de alguna manera, eh, porque le, le he hecho dos preguntas de lo mismo, mal escritas las dos, pero bueno, a ver si le responden. <risa> Yeah, I actually, you know, I actually consider it, like how I, how I actually work with people and that relationship. Imagine, yeah. and, <laughs> and so uh, it's just, it, you know, it's nice. It's just, you know, and, and I don't, you know, I don't like us to hang around basically. So, you know, there was a point when I had seven ships, I think eight ships on at one point. That was pretty hefty. Um, it's less now. So it's night. I prefer it now because I, I have definitely more hands on and making stronger decisions and so definitely I think from bueno, está comentando que al principio pues que tenía como nueve naves ocho naves trabajando a la vez que prefiere el sistema que hay ahora que hay muchas menos naves porque era demasiada carga de trabajo no so it's just yeah that's not right fix that do this and we just we just keep moving hey buenas Harlo buenas RW yeah. buenas so Dugan. with the Valkyrie that was your tenth ship uh, you, you, you did you did some work, uh, so, so, uh, so, some finished work on the on the Star Fair. But as far as ships that were yours from beginning to end, this is your tenth complete ship, uh, ma making you the artist who's done more ships for Star Citizen than anyone at this point. Your I next get a prize, yeah. I win. Your your next ship, the thing that you win now, is the biggest you ship, get a free coffee, and cup. perhaps the most, uh, it may be the most complex okay. ship that you've had to do. You alluded to it earlier, the Kraken. Que la nave en la que yeah, está ahora es la, yeah, es la Kraken, que es probablemente la nave más grande en la que haya tenido que estar trabajando. Uh, you know, for you at this point, tell us about the Kraken. Dinos este la, la, la Kraken. Was like four and a half months or five months or something we spent on this thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a long time. It was. De cuatro, heavy. de cuatro a cinco meses yeah, que gastó el tipo trabajando en ella. Early stuff there, I can't even remember what what the early stuff was like. I feel like you hit it. Oh, I remember this process. Yeah. I do have some earlier stuff here. Let me just bring this up. So these are some, this, you're going to see some early Krakens here. Sure, let's see some early Krakens. But there's the funny story, right? Remember the little crappy sketch I gave you? Yeah. Oh, I don't have that image. I was on the board. Krakens in the version temprana, and además, como que Paul le dio un... 
un boceto cutre al principio que fue un poco como divertido, ¿no? Pero estos son los conceptos, lo que pudo haber sido, madre mía, totalmente distinto. But basically, it was a it was a, a ship. It was a boat that I put on its side and then drew some. Um, it was just a top view, wasn't it? So I drew in the shadows, like as if there was a really strong sunlight, so you could see like the sort of the verticality of it, and then put some, just put some. Um, I was quite like landing this thing, pads this on twin it. Hole thing. I thought this this had some promise, but yeah, I was working towards all this stuff, and then Paul comes in with this ship thing. <laughs> ruins my day <laughs> so i was sort of working from a more abstract point of view of uh you know i was sort of looking at it for like a like a, a kraken essentially so having eight eight paddles of some sort like there was you know some vague representation of a of a kraken. que estaba pensando incluso en la, en la posibilidad de hacer una kraken con que representara pues eh, como es eso un pulpo gigante ¿no? como ocho representaciones ocho landings ocho cosas raras por ahí se ha quedado bastante vueltas por lo que veo la, la kraken sus orígenes al final definitivamente al final definitivamente se ha decantado se han decantado por hacer una nave tipo portaaviones y a, a vivir que está bien en realidad está bien porque coño digo yo que eh, los portaaviones se habrán diseñado con alguna de alguna manera interesante no no al tuntún uh. Okay. I yeah, the, the, sometimes these things get quite conversational, don't they? We'll we'll kind of have a steer kind of later on, and we've already started and we're already exploring some things, and then it's like, oh, actually, can we kind of bring it towards this? And all of a sudden, it'll just click. And it used to be. I mean, I guess in the early days, it used to be part. <clears throat> you know, it, you know, it used to scare the hell out of me because I'd just be like, oh, you know, I don't know what Chris is going to say. But now it's just like. We're just going to give him cool stuff and then just see what you know. We just see what he says. Um, there's always that. Está diciendo, bueno, a veces no sé qué, no, no sabemos qué Chris iba a decir, así que sol, simplemente vamos a darle movidas geniales y a ver lo que decide, ¿no? One of the things that always impresses me about concept artists is is a big part of the job. Not not all of it, certainly, but but at least a part of the job is is pulling ideas out of other people's heads. It's 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 you know it, 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 sometimes I'm amazed that you don't spend half your time just screaming. Just tell me. Sí, una de las cosas que le impresiona descolando es eh, que el artista de concepto tiene que que sacar ideas de la cabeza de los demás, no, al al, al papel o a donde sea. O sea, que es algo que le impresiona el proceso. We are uh, we're almost at the end now. The next ship, uh, at this point, uh, you, you've touched a whole bunch of different brands, and you're, you're now going to touch another brand that's going to be new for you, and that's the Argo Mole. Right? Yeah, también hizo, la, this también hizo la, el Argo Mole, por lo visto. Uh, Madre mía. Mining extractor. This came out. This came out nice. This one, I think. Yeah. Again, first Argo yeah, ship. Yeah, it was fun. This one, Paul, wasn't it? Working out all the all the mechanisms and stuff. I'm not sure. You, I'm not sure you'd call it fun at the time for you, but uh... it was. It was one of those bold new frontier things. I always kind of enjoy it where we're doing something on a ship and there's new tech involved. It's like we've got these side pods and the extracts and all this stuff, and it's, there's no other ships doing that. So we're kind of trying to work it out in a kind of design-friendly way through the concept. So yeah, we, I mean, we, it was, we, there were so many things to figure out, weren't there? A lot. Yeah. Remember Mr. Tickle. Que trataron de trataron de enseñar la nave de una de una forma amigable. Pues supongo que para el desarrollo se refiere porque había muchísimas movidas involucradas en, en el desarrollo, muchas cosas pasando en la nave, ¿no? Al fin y al cabo pues es una nave minera con tres rayacos y tal y y huetol y bueno, muchas cosas, ¿no? Basically. And so we had one that actually just went right over the top. Yeah, it could reach everywhere. Excuse me, Oscar. Yeah, it could uh, it could kind of do all of this. Stuff. So I you know, I did a I did a draw on the real time board of like Mr. Tickle's arms just like just tickling away at rocks and stuff and then yeah. I'm gonna it didn't ask make that it. You, I'm gonna ask that you not show that one. <laughs> uh, Gavin. It's just Paul's subtle way of demoralizing me. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping me in line. Tiene como una especie de concepto como con brazos que podía agarrar las rocas por encima, en plan como si te pasas el brazo por la espalda, como acaba de hacer ahí abajo. Algo muy muy raro, muy jodidamente raro. One of the things I loved about this ship too is this piece in particular, because I did this 8K, right? This is an 8K cutaway. And it's just got all this detail in it that was just super cool to do. Like you can go right in on it all. Yeah. You can like see the whole thing. It's really nice. Um, yeah, this is when it comes to showing off interiors for ships. 
I'm all about this. So I'm always trying to get Paul to do cutaways for promo because I love doing stuff like this. But you could like blow this up to a billboard and it'd look nice. You know, it's got so much resolution in there. Una de las cosas que dice que, que bueno, que al principio que empezó a hacerlo con la Terra Pink es el hecho de hacer la sección de la nave hacia la mitad, la nave seccionada, que es algo muy interesante para los conceptos, para mostrarlos y demás. Y para la, para la promo, ¿no? Spent time on just sort of visual flow as well, how it sort of flows from left to right, top to bottom. Um, and so, yeah, there was, there was, there was a lot. But I mean, I mean, Gav's just, you know, he's, uh, he's outdone himself on this one with the amount of detail in this. This is where I just stay up late, get a cup of tea, put some music on and just go down a hole. It's like, I can just sit on this. Well, that's what I do. I'll just work all night and just push and poke at it. And that's me like in my happy place, basically. All right. Now your, your, your last ship that the public is currently aware of that's been revealed, uh, not, not, certainly not your last work for Star Citizen, but the, but the, where we're going to wrap up today, uh, you went to yet another new manufacturer uh, with Crusader and the Ares Starfighter. Yeah, I've been I've been wanting to do a Crusader ship um, since. Eh, I no, was it la... the one that Sarah did? Sarah did that awesome one, Star Runner. La Ares, sí. Yeah, um, vale. Mercury <clears throat> Star Runner. Que yeah, es el, so, el último uh, concepto you know, revelado de él y que no va a ser, and, porque tampoco es el, el último, ¿no? Tampoco va a ser el último, la última nave. Yeah, you know, it's the kind of stuff de Star Citizen, obviamente. Y ni, ni la suya, supongo. It was funny this one, though, wasn't it? Because there was a lot of backwards and forwards in terms of gun position, gun size. Oh, yeah. Dice que una de las cosas que hubo de divertidas de esto es que hubo como muchos pasos adelante y atrás eh, a la hora del tamaño del arma, eh, la posición del arma. Cut that clean rectangular shape hole out of it, and still have it look cool. And <laughs> yeah. that's not easy, like doing that stuff. There's a trick to it. No, there was a lot of backwards and forwards. Claro, dice que eh, la hora de hacer la nave, pues tienen que hacer como un rectángulo y luego eh, tratar de, de definir la, la forma de la nave a través de, de ahí y que no es un trabajo fácil. Eh, debido a lo que a lo que lleva, a lo que presenta la nave, ¿no? Que es ese concepto, esa idea de, de llevar arma grande. I kind of some of my favorite shots are with this ship. Dice porque esta es una de sus fotos favoritas de la nave. Yeah, so typically what we do in the in the uh, workflow is I'll create a, a 3D model in Maya, then I'll take that into Keyshot, <clears throat> and sometimes it's got textures on it, um, and then I'll hand all that stuff over to Paul, and then quite often we'll yeah we just roll our sleeves up, don't we, and just kind of get through it together, really. Yeah, because sometimes there's sometimes you're just sort of you're cutting it close, like there's you know there've been, you know there's just lots of things that have just chipped away at the time and then it's like right we've eaten into our promo time it's it's all right let's get Paul on it or you know or we'll, we'll just figure out who does what and so again I'll try and you know I'll try and give Gav I give Gav the pick of the litter essentially so you know hopefully he gets to do the shots that he likes and then I'll I'll pick up whatever's left or whatever needs filling in after marketing. Of you can always keep me happy with a cutaway, Paul. Just uh, keep <laughs> yeah, that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 Gav, at this point at this point you've got uh, we, we've we've talked. Uh, no, hablando... At least two more on the way uh, that we're not, we're not allowed dos, to talk about today. So. Dos más, dos naves más que, um, de las que no van a hablar ahora. in their time. Um, of the ones that that we've discussed today, do, do you do you have a favorite? Do, do, is, is there something that, que hemos that you're, hoy, you're, o sea, you're the most hoy, proud of, or, or just has the best? O sea, que tienen dos más por llegar y no van a hablar de ellas, vaya hombre, qué pena. I think they change when I look at them. I, mean, I don't have a constant favorite. I mean, one of the ships that we've got um, that we can't talk about just came out so nicely, <laughs> and we had. It's, no, I mean, no, you'll no, see what I mean. No. Come out. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's nobody nobody knows what this is, but it's something you haven't seen yet. Let's just say that. Come on, Jared, <laughs> help us out here. All right, that's all we got time for. I'd like to uh, thank. Uh, but don't we don't we have like some something you want to talk about? Doesn't Gav have something coming out? <laughs> what? Doesn't Gav like have a movie or something coming out? Oh that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, all right, What's sure. Today? Why not? We we got we got one minute. We well, we should talk about. You you you've got a movie. 
yeah, I've just made a movie. I've just written and directed a movie and production designed it. So yeah, if you like my artwork, watch Archive, which has just been, it releases today in the United States, North America. Bueno, dice que si le que um, gusta su trabajo, que miráis una peli que, que ha hecho que se llama Archive. Y que, pero que no, no va, que here, una, 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 una de las naves que más le mola, o sea, la nave que más le gusta es una que todavía no, que todavía hemos visto, ¿vale? Es una nave que todavía no hemos visto que está por salir. Así que de momento pues hay que aguantarse y joderse, pero, pero que no se ha visto todavía. O sea, que es, y es una novela que está trabajando. ¿Cuál será? Yeah. No, so, yeah. so archive, so, so, so check that out. Um, all right. Uh, but, but Gav's still doing stuff for us, right? We're keeping hold of him. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going We're anywhere. We're like, yeah. All right. So uh, for, 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 uh, as we are wont to do, we are going to throw the host on to another Star Citizen streamer. Uh, so that should start any minute now. When you see, when you see, the, uh, when you see the raid go up, you can sh be sure you opt in. Uh, today's streamer is Ari Neo, uh, who, if I remember correctly, uh, is, is a, a, a fluent English and Spanish uh, a speaking streamer. Uh, they do a lot of our translations for the Spanish speaking community, which we always appreciate. And um, yeah, so check that out. And uh, when you get there, tell them tell Gav says hi. And uh, for Star Citizen Live, uh, I'm Jared. Uh, that's oh, this direction. That's, that was Gavin over there. That's Paul down below. Take care, everybody, and uh, we'll see you back here next week. Bueno, pues ahí se acabó el Star Citizen Live. Ahí se acabó el Star Citizen Live y. Ok, bueno, entonces. Wait. <ríe> y le han hecho el raid a Arineo. Y. A ver. Eh, quería buscar una cosilla, que es la, la movida esta de Archive. A ver de qué coño va. De 2020 y MBD. Eh, vale. Pues es esta, ¿no? How's my man? Oh, no play, huh? I really hope you're happy there. I'm not missing you. A bit. A lot. I'm working on something. To bring you back. They've never managed to connect a computer to the archive before. I waited a long time. And then I saw something. Bueno, pues... Vamos a dejarlo ahí, el, el tráiler. Supongo que en algún momento el bicho querrá destruir el mundo. <risa> Tiene toda la pinta de que el bicho vaya a querer destruir el mundo. Y eso es todo por el Star Cities en Life, chicos. Así que... Eh, bueno, aquí lo dejamos de momento. Me voy a cenar algo, daros las gracias por las visitillas, que os agradezco un montón, que sois la rehostia. Y nos vemos en un ratillo. Hasta ahora.